Okay. Um, there we go. All right. So welcome to the February um, Trade the Fifth webinar. Now, what I wanted to do today, I wanted to concentrate and go back to the basics again to remind ourselves how to use our Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. We've had a lot of add-ons and black box breakout indicators and we can go through them again today. But what I want to do first is just go back to basics. Okay. So, <clears throat> remember the basics of Elliott Wave. It is a, a way to simply and repeatably measure a trend. We label a trend, okay? A one, two, three, four, and five. Once the wave one, the two, the three, and the four have happened, then they've kept within our rules, and those rules are helped by, and we'll go through that in a minute, our, um, our subcharts and our pullback zones and anything like that. The fifth wave has a really good probability of making that new wave five high. So remember, this is what it is. We don't move trend. We don't move markets as retail traders. It is uh, institutional traders that move. They see value, they buy. Somebody else sees value as an institutional trader, and they buy some more. And that's what moves markets. All we do is try and measure that trend, wait for that uh, wave for pullback, and then look for those entries, because that fifth wave is the highest probability to move in that trend. Not forgetting, this on this screen here is my institutional grade, Elliott Wave Indicator Suite software. This software is used by institutional traders, okay? So they use this software, they understand where stocks are, and futures, uh, on different time frames, on the daily, the weekly, intraday, where they are on the Elliott Wave count, where they are in the trend. And they will make decisions based on that as well. Now, we've got this now on Think or Swim, uh, Ninja Trader, Trade Station, and MultiChart. So we can we can copy, but we can be a little bit late into the game just to make sure they're on the way, okay? So let's look at Marriott. I've just, I've just made my uh, free daily video on for tradethefifth.com for Monday today on Marriott. I've been working all day, to be honest. I've been uh, putting the video together for the swing trades uh, for next for Monday. I've been working on this and, and the core trading strategy and everything like that. So uh, on the back, you won't see it properly. You've got to be in it to win it, okay? <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, I mean, that's my motto. motto. You've got to be in it to win it, okay? Uh, it's pointless sitting on the fence. If you've got a simple, repeatable strategy, you've just got to be in it to win it. So let's look more closely at this pullback on the 60-minute time frame on Marriott. So first of all, we have pulled back into the top of our probability pullback zones. 85% probability is going to go on and make that new wave five high. That's a tick in the box. That's number one. We then measure the performance of that wave four on the oscillator. Okay. So the highest point on the oscillator here on the wave three, let's take this off and let's do the measurement again, just to, just to remind you. Okay. So. I can use my Fib retracement if I like. I can start at the zero point. I can take my zero line to the top end of the oscillator on the way three, and I can let go, okay? I've got 90 and 40 because I've set that as my default. So I've got 90, 0 0.9 or 1.4, and I can save that as default. So every time I use a retracement, that will come up, and it's really, really simple. We will look to... Um, automate this in the future, um, but we've got some other developments that we're working on right now, so it won't be probably until uh, Q3 this year that we work on version 4, because we're making some uh, standalone scanners and things like that at the moment, and there's a lot of development uh, time with that. Um, so, again, the behaviour of the wave 4 is important. It's got to hit one of our pullback zones, it, the 535's got to be within the 90, the 140. Now, we look at closely at this. 
we can see it's just started to crown as well as we got that big leap and that move into the end of the session on Friday. Quite a bullish move. Surprised everybody, really. I thought it was just going to keep going down on Friday. Uh, that's why I finished early, went and had a curry and a beer. Um, but it did. Marriott closed near the high of the day on Friday. Closed very, very strongly there. Uh, the next thing is the false breakout stochastic. Look at this in the overbought zone there. That denotes a really strong bullish trend. We then pulled down against it. It wants to return to its main bullish trend. And that's, you know, that's building up a picture and a confidence in this fifth wave move. Obviously, bullish markets are going to help with this on, on Monday. Uh, and that nice bullish move into the end, as long as Mr. Trump and the Chinese don't start fight, you know, giving a bit of a fight over the weekend on the on the tariffs and everything. Markets, I would say should open reasonably bullish on, on Monday. So, you know, that's what we're looking for. The multiple time frame dot cloud is not part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. As you know, it's part of the black box breakout indicator or the day trading add-on. But I just wanted to show that in here, in that this, obviously, all these green on the 60, the two hour, the four hour, the daily, and the weekly, all green. So they're above our uh, EMA cloud. So strong bullish stock. And then you see that pullback on here where we go cyan into the cloud on the 60, below the cloud on the 60, into the cloud on two hourly, and then we start to move back up again. And what we'll see before our entry is we will go all green on here. So that gives us a, a great looking potential trade there. So what setup have I gone in for entry strategy? The entry strategy is really important here. There's a few ways of doing this. So at this moment in time, um, I'm more conservative. I can show my settings on the dot cloud. Let me just finish this, Trevor, and we go through it. Uh, by the way, cheers, Trevor. I'm having a beer. It's five o'clock in the afternoon, and somebody very close to me is having a barbecue, and it smells amazing, so I need a beer. Yes. <coughs> it's not a trading day. I've done all my work, I've got, I've got this a webinar and a meeting. So entry strategy, remember we've got our six form moving average high in the green here and in the red uh, is the six form moving average low. It broke through the six form moving average high on Friday, okay? We then, uh, we've got to still get through the cloud for me, my EMA cloud, plus also I'm a whole dollar type of guy. I want to be conservative. I want to be over $116 because, again, we've got the weekend and we could see a little gap up here. So I want to see where the risk to reward is on my gap up uh, potential here. Where will I be able to gap up until before I lose my risk to reward? So I've gone for that 11606 entry here. The stop loss with a $100 stock needs to be about 10 cents below the wave four pivot here down the bottom. So the, the low here was uh, 114.58, I've got 114.48. It's important. When you've got a cheap uh, $10, $20 stock, you need to be one cent below. But if you've got a $100 stock, you've got to be sensible. It's got to be five cents below. There's always a bit of slippage. Uh, if it's a $50 stock, you need to be five cents below. And that sort of rough calculation in your head that's where you should be placing your stop loss below that wave four. Does that make sense? Because we don't want to be tight on it. The, the bigger the stock, I mean, you, you look at uh, $1,600 stock like, uh, like Amazon, you know, you, if you've got a wave four pullback on a, on a daily time frame or even on a six week time frame, you, you, you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, it, you've got to be at least 20, 30 cents, if not more below that stock because you get that slippage. Uh, when it goes and tests those lows. So then I work out my risk to reward to the automated target zone here, and I've got a one to 1 1.6. So I'm just gonna take that off there and just go over how to draw the risk to reward again, okay? So I'm gonna use the FIB extension tool. I'm gonna place that at 114.48 or thereabouts, there we go. I'm gonna click once. 
I'm then going to take it to my entry price that I want. So 116.06. Click a second time and then click a third time at exactly the same price. Okay. That gives me my risk to reward. Again, I've put this as my as a template. So when I edit those properties, um, I've gone for my zero line as green hash line because that's my entry. That's my go line, if you like. Um, and then I've got the 0.5 fib for 50% times risk or the 100% risk of one. 1 1.6 is my minimum risk to reward. Remember, it's okay having a potential fifth wave trade. But you've got to have a minimum risk to reward to get to that target. Because if you're going one to one all the time and you're losing that 1% that you're, that you're risking all the time, you're only ever going to break even. You need those 1 to 1.6s. So you're reaching those targets and your wins on average are over 1%. And your win rate needs to be more than 50%. So therefore, you're always going to be in profit. And that's how I, that's how I trade. And then I've got 2% in there as well. So then you can see there the 160% is in the bottom half of the uh, target zone. So, you know, that gives us a really good risk to reward. Uh, all the ticks are in the boxes for uh, the pullback zone, the oscillator, the, the, the stochastic, everything's looking good. So we've gone back to basics. We've got this potential trade. We've set it up very conservatively. We've got a risk to reward. We've got it to, to go. When you set up this order, it's a stop limit order. Okay. Now, for me, um, you know, I would just put another, just on top of that there, I'm just going to work out where the highest point is of a potential risk to reward. And I think it will be probably around about 116.26 or something like 2030. So if I put that in there, no, 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 no. The 1.6 is above. Okay, so we're 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 very close. I'm just thinking of when I put a stop limit order together, I will go plus or minus so many cents. So if, if it opens at 116.30, for example, the 1.6 is going to be above my entry level, above my target level there. So I can't do plus or minus 24 cents, for example, because I'll be taking too late. I want it when it's down below. So then all I've got to do is adjust this here. Let's put it at 106.20. Uh, and then move that to 106.20. And does that give me anything decent? Just at the top of the target zone there. So 20, 116.20 is the highest price that I'm prepared to get into Marriott on this potential fifth wave trade. Does that make sense? So when I put stop limit order on there, I'm going to go 116.06 as my entry price plus or minus 14 cents. Okay. Now we'll go for an example in a minute on another stock that I did a trade I did last week on IAC where it gapped up massively. I didn't get taken into trade, but it came and closed the gap went to my entry price and took me in. And that's what a stop limit order is all about. So let's get rid of that one there. Okay. So there we have the basic fifth wave move. I do Trevor, yes, and we'll do some examples of that uh, on here, but with, with Marriott, what I would do is I have a grid like this, okay? So you will see on the daily time frame, I've drawn this big resistance zone in here, and it's way above my target level on the intraday. And there's no other real resistance level that's going to affect this trade from that daily time frame. So if I'm trading on a 60 minute time frame, I need to be going up to the daily and see where those major support and resistance levels are to see if they're going to interfere and cause some issues on the way up to my target. If I'm trading off the four hour, I will still go to the daily. If I'm trading off the five minute, I'll probably go up to the 60. If I'm trading off the daily, I need to go to the weekly time frame and look for those big support and resistance levels. Okay, that I always do that. So 
On the daily, I've drawn that in there, but again, when you look at this on the 60 minute, it's way up there, okay? And now, it could go there. This could be a monster trade. I don't know. Uh, I've not got a crystal ball, uh, you know, despite what some people think, I have not got a crystal ball. So all I know is, I've set up this trade. This is my target for this intraday trade. I want to swing it. I need it entering on Monday. I need to be out by Friday. That's it. Okay. So I look at those potential swings at the weekend. And I've put quite a few out in the swing trading membership uh, today for Monday. Because I need them to trigger on Monday or Tuesday on this 60 minute time frame. <clears throat> because I don't want to carry over the weekend. Now I have carried box, but that was. I put that out um, very quickly on Friday uh, because we've already had a swing trade off that the daily time frame done very well, but then it pulled back, so I did a quick and I've carried that one. But normally, my 60 minutes, I want to—I just want to trade during the week, and I need them to trigger Monday or Tuesday. Um, you know, and in reality, when you look at this, one, two, three, a three-day move on this would take me to my target. So that looks pretty, you know, pretty hot to trot for me. So let's just go through the mtf.cloud um, settings. This is a 60 minute time frame. So as you can see here, I've got two hours. So the first row of dots is, it's set because it sets the time frame that you're on with your chart. So that's an hour. Then I've gone two hours, four hours daily. Period two is the gap here. And then I've got two days on there. That's fine for me. I'm trading intraday, 60 minute. I'm all green. I'm ready to go. Does that make sense, Trevor? Yeah. Okay, Trevor, go and get a beer. Okay. Right. So I want to go through a couple more of examples now. So let's go through. I think it's Zen. Zen. Okay. Okie dokie. Right. So with Zen, this was a massive trade uh, in the week. Um, but I just wanted to show you this on a multiple time frame point of view. And this is something I teach <coughs> for Marriott around about 119, Jose. That's the uh, that's the target price for Marriott next week. <coughs> but what I, it's something I teach in my lead training course is multiple time frame strategy. So we need to know where we are on the on wave counts on the daily, which is my left chart here. Um, I have the four hour, I have the 30 minute down here, and I have the 60 minute down here. So what we look for is, um, I did a uh, breakout trade on Zen. I was late into the fifth wave move on the daily, okay? I was late into the move. I had my original entry at um, 66.49, something like that. Let's just put that in there. This was a massive win. Um, so I was using my black box breakout indicator here because um, the entry was in this one. Let me just zoom out a little bit here. It was this one. Uh, where's the stop? There it is. There it is. There. Sorry. Okay. So this is a bit of an earnings play. Oops. I just want to adjust these properties a minute and put uh, 250 in there. Oops. 2.5 and 3. Put them on. Okay. So this was my train of thought, okay, for Zen. I'd missed the fifth wave entry. I was too late. Okay, I didn't get it. Now, it then moved, the, the entry was above this pivot point here. So I'm late in, but I get a signal on my black box breakout indicator 
I've got earnings coming very soon. It's a very strong bullish trend. Do you know what? I go for an earnings play. So I use my black box breakout indicator. This is obviously a think swim version. Uh, and I got this signal here. Okay, so this is the signal I went in. One, two, three days before earnings. Okay, take half the position off before earnings, already in profit. And then it gaps up massively here and I take 250. Okay, uh, I took 250% profit times risk in five days. Really, really simple. So, idea. I knew it was going to go and hit, uh, you know, the high probability of going to hit that fifth wave target zone on my daily time frame. I got a good signal on the black box breakout indicator because I'm late into this fifth wave. I can't, I've got to have a tight stop and a tight entry. I, I'm confident because of the Elliott Wave indicator suite that we're on a fifth wave, some really strong bullish trend. All the previous earnings have been good uh, boosts to that bullish trend, and there's no reason. Uh, that I could find that that would change. So in the trade, 250% times profit. Now, we look at the multiple time frame strategy. Look what's happened on the 60 minute time frame. Okay. It had the gap up. We moved down. We hit the cloud. And then we're on a fifth wave move. There's the target, $82 on the 60 minute time frame. So once you become intimate with stock and your stock gives you good, some good earnings, a good result there, you get in again, okay? Uh, and you've got to, got to wait for pullback intraday. It's not perfect, but you know what? You've got signals here to go in at 73.47 on your black box breakout indicator. And guess what? We've got another one. We've got another one from Friday, okay? So this is how I would set this up. Let's get rid of this. So I'm pretty confident this is a bullish stock, had great earnings. We had the normal profit taking from people like me that were speculating and it gapped up. They took the profits off the daily time frame, and that caused that pullback, which is natural. That pullback find, found support, it found a way for. We didn't get the backup of the, the, because it was so quick, we didn't get the backup of the oscillator and the stochastic. So we got no normal fifth wave trade. But we know it's a strong bullish stock. We've got a fifth wave target. Is there an entry strategy? Yes. By combining our thoughts on the Elliott Wave indicator. So we, we can see intraday, I've got this big support resistance level in there. We've got a signal. I'm not going to take this very tight signal here from Friday. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 7389. And I'm going to take the 7669 entry. Okay. This may even just be a day trade, depending on the move. I might have to adjust this and see what the risk reward is into that fifth wave target zone there. Um, we say it was a 69, wasn't it? So, okay, so this will go out. This actually will go out on my swing trading and day trading signal service on Monday. Um, so let's put the stop in here. So I've got the black box breakout signal. I'm confident. I've just had a massive win of 250% times risk on the daily time frame. It's pulled back. It's found support. That natural process has happened. We've gone intraday. We're using the multiple time frame strategy, and we've got a fifth wave target. So we're going to look for a trade. We're going to get in and again. And guess what? We've won 250%, 100% of that we put into this trade as well. If we then risk that 100 and we get another 160, we've made over 400% profit times risk on this one stock in a few weeks' time. This is how powerful the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite is and the, the Black Box Breakout Indicator because we can get in some of these trades. When we look at this, we think, oh, we're late for a swing on this uh, for the fifth wave move. It does, it, you know, the setup's not quite right. But guess what? That black box has told me there's a breakout signal at 76.69, stop loss at 73.89, nice bullish flag forming there, got a fifth wave target from my other indicator suite. This looks great, I'm gonna go for it. The risk reward is one to 1.6, into that target zone on Zen. My multiple time frame dot cloud at the bottom is all green. 
totally bullish. That's really good. So this is my entry on Zen on Monday, 76.69. Uh, now it's really close. It closed at the high. It closed at 67, uh, 76.37. So we haven't got a lot, but you know, unless there's earnings, this stock doesn't really gap up. There's not a lot of pre-market uh, action with this. So, you know, we've got a decent risk reward. We've got one to two into the target zone. We've got our longer term daily channel to get back into here as well. So let's just trade this breakout. Let's look to swing it two or three days. If it hits the fifth wave target zone, guess what? I'm out and I'm gonna to add to my profits, okay. So what I've done there is I've, I've really used this multiple time frame strategy. So just to remind you, uh, ready for Monday, if you fancy Zen on the 60 minute, uh, 76.69 is my entry for the breakout, but be careful of the gaps. You've got to watch it pre-market. 73.89 is the stop and your target, you know, you, your top end of your target is $82. But anything from $81 is your one to 1.6, so a really good risk to reward there. So I now want to go to box because I this this is similar to Zen, but I'm already in that second trade. So we'll go back to the daily. So this again is slightly different. So, what I've done, what I've got here, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a, a one, two, I've got a bearish trend that's hit the fifth wave, okay? It, it's at an all time low at 1564, not quite reached my target, but I've had an Elliott fifth, uh, five wave count. So, I've had a bearish trend, didn't quite hit the target. Now I've got a trend potential trend reversal on my hands with box. Okay, now it's only a trend reversal, and we're talking daily time frame here. I don't do trend reversals, anything less. So, part of my video for box um, for this trade uh, was um, once it gets above this wave four pivot, that's when it officially becomes a potential trend reversal. We've gone through a correction phase, it's gone through the wave four pivot, and we're ready to go. So I actually went in at this price here, 20, 2023, on the black box breakout indicator, and 1914 was my target, okay? Then it just piled up there, absolutely massive move, 350% profit times risk, took the profit, okay? Big trade, okay? And this happened, you know, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, eight or nine days, really, really strong. Used the black box breakout indicator, got the big move, got out, took profits. Now, then keep an eye on this, on the 60 minute time frame. Lo and behold, what happens? We get a pullback after that big gap up. It happens all the time. People like me take profit. That brings the price down. And those institutional traders are no different, they're human beings. They've got been in a trade for nine days, they've had a breakout potential trend reversal, they've took some of the position off or all of the position off. Then we have a wave four pullback on the 60 minute time frame. Okay, we're just, just around about there on the oscillator. Stochastic's brilliant. You can see that pullback on the MTF dot cloud, just slightly in the cloud there. Find support in the cloud in our pullback zone. So you've got an EMA cloud, which is a moving average, so it's non-linear. But it finds support in our linear pullback zones, our Fib zones, our green zones, and our non-linear cloud. Really strong support level there on that pullback. So on Friday, I set up an entry. I even went on Twitter Live, I think, uh, to do this. I set up an entry for 2308, uh, we're, you know, we're above the high of, Friday, of the day before on Thursday. You see Thursday, we had the continuation, the gap down, moved down, came back and recovered a little bit there, 786 retracement or something like that. But my entry on Friday had to be above the high of, of Thursday. 
So 23.08 above the whole $23 mark. Uh, we got 22.29. Again, the waveform low there is 22.32. So it's a cheaper stock. Three cents below the waveform is sensible for that top price of stock. Okay. So now we're in this trade. I'm carried it over the weekend. Hopefully Trump will stay away from Twitter and make no announcements. Uh, and we are looking for box to continue on that overall bullish trend. I've taken 350% profit times risk. I've risked 100%, you know, one, one portion of that 3.5 portions of, of, of win uh, to get another 1.6, okay? So it's had a good move. We had a really strong bullish move into the end of the session on, on Friday. At some stage, I was thinking of taking this off. Um, but it just went, and I, I was on my phone, sat watching TV, having a beer, uh, having just having a curry, uh, and I just literally, I, you know, do you know what? Let's keep it on. This is good. I've had a good experience with this stock already, uh, and with Zen. Uh, I've got a good fifth wave set up here. Very strong stock. Got to give it a go. So I'm carrying it over to Monday. Hopefully, we could hit that target. My only issue is got an all-time high here. Um, at the previous wave three. But when you've got that momentum in a bullish move or a bearish move, uh, you're looking for that wave three to be broken 80% of the time. You know, this 80-20 rule is really, really strong. So I am looking for a new high. I'm looking for this for this stock to keep pushing. Uh, and that 24.32, 24.40 sort of fifth wave target level is what I'm looking for. Um, and again, I covered this in depth in my elite training course, and I know some of you, like Trevor, has already got that. Uh, but this is really critical because once you start getting great stocks coming on board, you've just got to keep trading them uh, until they run out of juice. Once they run out of juice, throw them away and get them a new one. They're not like a wife. You know, there's no sentiment or, or love attached to a ticker. It's just a ticker. While it's going for you, you take your profit, you wait for the pullback, you get back in again. Okay, stochastic on this one. Perfect example. We've got the false breakout of the top. We pull back against there and we cross over in the oversold zone against the false breakout. What that means is, the false breakout bar is designed to show you strong momentum in that. In, in, the, in this case, it's in the overbought zone, uh, Trevor. So <coughs> it is strong bullish momentum. If it's in the bottom, in the oversold zone, it's strong bearish momentum. Okay. But when the stochastic pulls back against there into the 20% oversold zone and crosses over, the likelihood is it wants to return to that main bullish trend, which it's done. What we're looking for now is false breakouts in this overbought over zone to start producing another one of these. If that happens and we're at my target zone, I might just take half my position off, put my uh, stop loss at break even and give this a chance to move higher. That stochastic, if I get another false breakout bar at the top, all my multiple time frame dots remain green. That's got to give me confidence just to take that half position off uh, and let it ride. Make it risk free with the other half, with, with the other half of the position. But you know, it could just keep going. Uh, and if, if it does run out of juice, I'll just get out. Does that make sense, Trevor? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so we've gone back to basics. We've discussed everything we need to do to get into those fifth wave moves. We've also gone then to, uh, to use the black box breakout indicator as well. We've looked at multiple time frame strategy, the basics, there's a lot that goes with it. But as you can see, by just combining these two indicator suites, we can stay busy, we can stay profitable, and we can stay consistently profitable by trading those good trades. Now, 
not you won't see them all uh, what i try and do i'm lucky i've got a trading team and i put those signals out in the swing trading membership i've got the day trading membership and the new futures trading membership so you know i put those signals out i'm in front of all of these this seven or eight monitors here during the european morning because i live in europe and during the us session for at least the first half an hour if not more so <coughs> i've got a good sign of where going i'm running scans I'm using institu institutional grade software as well, just to back things up. Uh, but in reality, I'm using our indicator suite now for everything, all my videos, everything. Um, I paid a lot of money for this institutional grade software, so I use it. Um, so, you know, we've gone through quite a bit today, um, but in reality, this is quite simple. I'm not an overly intelligent guy, I'm an ex-soldier, I'm ex-military, I'm ex-engineer, uh, and I, le I need something simple and repeatable. And this is how uh, this software development has come about, is because this is the strategy I've been trading. All I needed to do was get some geek to put it into software for Think or Swim Ninja Trader Trade Station, okay? And there'll be more platforms coming soon. So these are the strategies, this breakout strategy, the Elliott Wave, Fifth Wave Move strategy, these are all the strategies I've been using for way over a decade and a half now. And what we've done is put it into that software and I'm backing it up with this webinar every month, okay? Um, with the boot camps, with the training, with a core trading strategy course that we've released, the elite training course, uh, just trying to, uh, trying to get you to use this more often to get those profitable, those consistent profitable trades. But you've got to be consistent in what you do. So I had a tough week in futures last week, okay? But I am confident in that strategy. So I'm just gonna push through, keeping that, not changing my strategy, and just, I know by the end of the month, I'll come back in profit, I'll be out of the hole by the end of next week, and I'll be in profit, okay? With the stocks, I'm in profit, okay? With the swings, doing quite well this, this, this month. Uh, we're about break even on the day trades because it was a tough week last week. Nothing was really trending. But it's keeping to these strategies and keeping it simple and keep repeating the same thing. And I call it my sausage machine strategy, okay? The sausage machine is really important in that you put the same ingredients, you get the same great sausages out. Some of them are losers, but most, you know, 60, 70, sometimes more, 80% of them are winners. But you've got to keep putting the same ingredients in. And those are the strategies that we use and we continually lose and repeat all the time. We don't go to the next big thing, the next fad, uh, the next, you know, whatever it is. There's so much out there. It's unbelievable. Keep it simple. Institutional traders look at Elliott Waves. They use this software here for Elliott waves, okay? They use this software. They use this scanner to find them, okay? What we've done is tried to get something very similar to what they're using because they move markets. They, they use support resistance levels, but they understand what's happening, where it is in the trend, when to get in, when to get out. Some of them trade the third wave, a lot of them trade the fifth wave. But in reality, they're still using that software and that strategy. I know from my experience, they also use breakout strategies as well if they're late into the game. They'll go tighter, if it's got the momentum, tighter stop, tighter, tighter entry, and just trade that last bit of the fifth wave. So hopefully you can understand how and why I've developed this to give you that, you know, that continual uh, trading um, mantle, if you like, to be, uh, if you're a part-time trader or a full-time trader, you've got the tools to, uh, to be profitable, con you know, continually profitable. So let's time, there's time to take questions now. We've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, have you, does, is there anything you want me to look at stocks wise? <coughs> oh, Q and A there. Uh, hi, Steve. Yes, I do. So on this screen here, on the one you can't see, 
<coughs> I have ES and YN, okay? On this screen here, I have NQ and RTY oil and gold futures as well. So I'm understanding how the market's moving. And with my trading team, we're discussing every day, RTI, you know, RTY is mostly a leader in the markets, uh, but YM uh, a few days uh, the other week was the leader, was pushing up very well. <coughs> so I'm understanding where we are. When I look at my, um, my ES, for example, <coughs> excuse me, when I look at my ES, I've got, I also use tick charts as well. So when I'm day trading, I can understand if we're going positive or negative ticks, how it's trending. But also when we look at ES here, this is my five minute chart, okay? You'll see these support and resistance zones in here. So what I do is I go back and my job tomorrow on a Sunday is to go to the 60 minute and I look for my support. You see, you can go back on my chart and they're all there. My support and resistance zones for ES, okay? So this is a big one. We've pushed through there. So I've got to think next week, you know, let me do this now. Let me show you. So I've got on my 60 minute. Where are we? Ultimately, you know, we've got this big resistance level up here. Okay, that's an ultimate target. If we're staying above this, uh, these support zones that I've drawn in, I just need to extend that for next week now. Whoops, let's get rid of that. Okay. So again, I'm putting my support and resistance zone in, and it gives me a good idea for each week. Okay. Right, so I don't. I, on futures, I have extended trading hours. On stocks, I don't, okay? Um, so, for futures, I need to understand what's happening during the Asian and the European session. So I need to understand what that sentiment is in those futures to help me make those pre-market decisions. But with stocks, we don't have the out of hours on our charts because that really does disrupt the Elliott Wave count. And in reality, not many people trade during pre-market. I'm based in Europe. My broker doesn't allow me to do anything pre or post-market, okay? So what happens is um, the software is designed uh, for the stocks especially to account for those gaps for that market action post and pre-market. But the charts don't have extended hours on for stocks but they do on futures. So what I've done, you know, this is my 60 minute chart for ES, for example. I've got a big resistance level up here, uh, forming a shoulder on the left there. I've really got to consider that zone. Excuse me a minute. I think our swing's gone funny. Oh, it's gone big. Okay. I've just extended these two because I think these support levels could be tested again next week here. But I've got this level here. Let me just switch off the bubbles for the multiple uh, for the breakout strategy here a minute. Let me just show them, switch them off a minute. Okay. Okay. They're not really useful on the 60 minute. I obviously need them on the five minute that I'm day trading. But I want to look at these this zone here uh, because I need to understand what's going off for next week. So part of my um, routine, if you like, at the weekend is I really look for, why is that not working? Okay. Right, so I'm looking at this left shoulder here and I'm looking and I'm going to the high of that peak there. And that is a big zone for me next week, okay? We could test that pretty quickly. Have I got a smaller zone? Absolutely, I have here, left and right. Look at this, that really, really is a strong zone. So I set up my, um, my ES, my YM, go to 60 minute. Look at this tip here, tip here, really strong price this for ES. And this on the left here could be tested and pushed through. So then I will obviously go back to the five minute. This, this is then obviously I trade on two, three and five minutes. Uh, but you know, when I go to ES on my flexible grid, for example, um, let me just get rid of that. 
uh, those zones are in for me. So when I, you know, this two minute chart here, if I've got a signal to go long and I'm going into this zone here, I might be a little bit hesitant. But what it does, it also allows me to understand what's going off in the markets. And that's on my left um, all the time for ES. And I've got a similar chart on my right for YM. And then on this one, I've just got five minute charts, RANQ, RTY, oil, and GC. Because obviously, have we got uh, oil, energy related stocks, uh, gold related stocks, they're all there for me. Does that, does that answer your question, Steve? Okay. Let me move that one back over. So yes, on stocks, uh, no extended trading hours, but on futures, absolutely. No problem. I just went for a beer, but it's empty. And that's not good. Okay, any more questions? G-O-L-S, Steve, is that the ticker? Or have you misspelt gold? Or misspelt gold? Gold, <laughs> right. Uh, let me um, let me reduce that. I'll bring this back over. Um, okay, so we'll go to charts, and I'll change that to GC. It's doing very well at the moment. I'm in GLD, the ETF. Uh, I've been in this for some time now, and I, I'm in good profit with that. It's a longer term uh, investment for me. Um, so, what we have with gold? So let's go. Let's go to the daily. I want to. Right, I'm not going to change everything off here um, because. Um, it's my sort of day trading, but I'm just going to go and look at the daily here. I'm just going to look at the pattern. You see on the fifth wave here, we have, um, we come from those lows really. I mean, I did some work on this. As you can see, I do a lot of work on gold here, uh, but we came to these lows and we are looking for this potential trend reversal now. Let me just go and... I need to change that wave count now because I was doing something on ES with that. Apply. Okay. So as you can see now, for me, what I look for is this has gone way beyond the wave four pullback zone. Okay. If it goes through 1337 and breaks this wave one pivot, that whole bearish trend is over and gold could be in a bullish trend, okay? So I'm using my Elliott Wave Indicator Suite on the daily time frame to see where we are in the trend, okay? So now we see these lows. I've got to see where we are intraday, where we are on that multiple time frame strategy. So I'm gonna to go to, the, to there, and this is where we are right now, okay? We've gone from these lows. We've had a wave for pullback. We're looking for longs. Now, I'm long. Okay, I've been long on GLD for quite a while. Um, so let me just have a look on this chart here. I'm gonna to go to GLD. Okay, so, uh, I mean, 116, we're at 124 now. So, um, you know, really, really good. But when we look at it on intraday, we've had this nice wave for pullback. I'm not changing everything else on here because uh, I use it for day trading. Uh, but what we've got to see is, this pivot level is crucial at this price. We see the left shoulder there. Okay, and we've got that pivot there. So really, we've got to be above 1321 to go long gold. Now, what we will need is weak stock markets for that to happen, because we will need to keep um, people wanting to get into gold, which will drive the price up. So there's a lot at the moment, but technically, if we get through 1321, Steve, we've got a lot of fresh air to 1331, to the previous wave free high uh, intraday, 
and ultimately we've got 1340 target okay so again multiple time frames gone through see where we are on that daily I've gone intraday this is where we are and if I was now day trading this obviously I've got some resistance here as well so I'm going to put that in at these points here that's big resistance zone there uh, there we are okay so we just tipped that as well uh, last week so now I've got to look on if I'm day trading gold okay see how rangy we've gone now we can't get through this zone at the moment you know it, we've got to get this is why I say we've got to get above 1321 we have got a bullish bias we are contracting it looks pretty good to me uh, for a long but it's got a little bit more work to do at the moment here so we've got this bullish bias um, and with this, this, this is really playing uh, into our hands there. Um, but I probably wouldn't go long if I was day trading into this zone. There's too much, um, there's too much resistance there. Does that make sense? If it breaks through there, there's a good move up to 1321. Uh, but at this moment in time, it could still break down. So I've just got to make sure that this is pushed through. Okay. So hopefully that helps you on gold. Uh, I need to go, guys, because I've got a meeting um, to, to attend. And so hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you very much, Don. You too. Everybody have a great weekend. Don't forget to check out those free daily videos on tradethefifth.com. I put stocks videos out every day, one free video every day. Loads of memberships on there and all my trading courses as well. Uh, loads of help for you guys to 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 make the most of this Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you very much. Let me just um, stop the recording.